so far and you know he he told me a couple laps ago he's like just be patient be patient and so you know i kind of laid off a little bit then and and then when it came down to a couple laps you go you know we've done it so many times in practice uh, the two of us pushing each other at the end and i knew i had a great shot so i just put my head down and, and dug down deep hey duck fans you know it's been a long off season but oregon sports are back well Almost. They're at least training. Student-athletes are reporting to campus now for the start of fall camps to prepare for the 2012 season. So, here we go. Oregon soccer has reported for the start of their fall camp, and they were treated to new locker rooms. Part of the new soccer-slash-lacrosse facility that was built just east of Autzen Stadium. GoDucks.com had a very cool video out this week showing the new digs. Season tickets are now on sale for the soccer season, so visit GoDucks.com for more info on that. Oregon football is reporting uh, to campus for the start of fall camp as well. The first practice is Monday. What's going to go down? We don't know because once again practices are closed, but I'm sure all the uh, news facilities will have people there to record interviews immediately after practice and we'll at least get a little tiny taste of what's going on. We're now less than a month away from the start of football season. Can you believe it? Only a couple of weeks. And the preseason awards, they just keep rolling in. It seems like just about every returning starter at this point is on some kind of watch list. This week, it's the Paul Horning Award, with Kenyon Barner and D'Anthony Thomas both being named to the list. Of course, preseason awards and watch lists, they don't really mean anything. It's about what they do during the season. But hey, you know, at least it gives us something to talk about. The coaches poll as well is another thing that means pretty much nothing right now. But it came out the first one this past week. Oregon is ranked number five overall. USC is number three. All eyes on that big November 3rd matchup. As for actual sports action involving the Ducks, hopefully you've been watching the Olympics. There are 11 athletes competing with University of Oregon ties. The first to start competing was Chamberlain Aguchi. He's the former Oregon basketball player who's now a member of Team Nigeria. And uh, he was quite recognizable with fluorescent green shoes. I guess that means you can take the kid out of Oregon, but you can't take the Oregon uniform influence out of the kid. Anyway, uh, Team Nigeria, they beat Tunisia, then they lost big to Team USA, giving up the most points in Olympic history. Track and field has now started up, and with that, all of our duckies are now competing, or at least about to start in their individual events. Brianne Thiessen, uh, competing for Team Canada, finished eighth in the heptathlon, but she set personal bests all along the way, so congratulations to her. The big moment thus far for our Oregon Ducks, though, had to be Galen Rupp's performance in the 10,000 meters on Saturday. Saturday afternoon, the 10K uh, had an unbelievable finish, with Rupp emerging from the pack down the final stretch and out kicking a Kenyan runner to finish number two behind his friend and training partner, Mo Farah, uh, out of England. So the uh, home country kid wins the gold, Rupp gets the silver. He's the first American to medal in the 10K since 1964, and only the third American to uh, medal in that event in the last hundred years. Guaranteeing at least one ducky is coming home with a medal. Galen's Olympics are not done. There's more events to come for him as the Olympics transition from being very swimming heavy in the first week to now being track and field heavy in the second week. The TV coverage has been kind of horrible as usual, focusing more on trying to tell dramatic individual stories rather than actually showing the events despite multiple channels running events for many hours on and they tend to only show Americans that are competing so who knew that there's actually other countries involved because all they show is the Americans. If you want to actually get the real Olympic experience I'd suggest going online and watching the events uh, on NBC's website. The TV coverage is horrible, the online coverage is fantastic. So if you're a sports fan who just wants to watch the events check out the NBC website instead. I've been getting my fill of whitewater canoeing and sailing and judo and soccer and water polo that way since it's stuff that they'll never show on TV. It's a time for celebration here at fishduck.com. Uh, this weekend is our one year anniversary since we launched this website. It's been a lot of work, uh, more than we ever anticipated, but it's been pretty fun too. Uh, we appreciate everyone that's been along for the ride. We're now ramping up for the start of the 2012 season. Both Charles and I are kind of in awe, really, of how much this site and our audience has grown 
over the past year. We've been so fortunate to have great people come aboard to write or to help out in other ways, and we look forward to providing all of you with continued great coverage. As for this past week's content specifically, on Tuesday, Charles had another video dissecting Oregon's defense further. This time he took a look at the inside zone blitz. Look for it on the front page of fishduck.com or as always in our directory, if you want to check out the video, you can click right here. And on Thursday in our ongoing one-on-one -on -one video series, I spoke with the Villanova wide receivers coach and recruiting coordinator, Brian Flint. You may be asking why talk to a coach from uh, an East Coast school like Villanova? Well, uh, what could they possibly have to do with the Ducks? Coach Flynn coached directly against Chip Kelly when Chip was at UNH. They have coaches on their staff who worked with Chip when he was at UNH. And they use many of the same concepts that Chip does. So it was an interesting conversation to see how the Villanova program compares with Oregon's program. So check it out. Also, Charles and I were the special guests this past week on the ASU Devil's Den podcast, previewing the 2012 season, looking at Oregon and ASU. It was a fun time, and thank you to Rob and Don for the invite onto the show. You can hear the podcast in its entirety on our site. The link is on the front page and in our forum. We also link directly to ASU Devil's Den podcast. They do a terrific job. Highly suggest checking out their show. We had some really interesting articles this week on the site that are definitely worth your time. A lot of focus is, of course, on football, as it always is on our site. But especially right now with the season quickly approaching, we're doing a lot of previews, looking at some of the big picture stuff related to the 2012 season. We had a guest article from Coach Tony DeMio once again on Friday. And my favorite article from this past week was a comparison of the bizarre A11 offense that became all the rage a couple of years ago in high school uh, to the... 1948 Tucker sedan as a direct comparison. That article was done by Josh Schlichter on Thursday. For all of our articles and videos, you can check out the directory section on fishduck.com. And now my random tweet of the week. Hey, will you shut up? Thank you. Music recommendation time. I've been really enjoying the Lollapalooza Festival live feed all weekend long from Chicago, despite a bit of a shutdown when a thunderstorm blew through and the entire thing had to be evacuated. One of the final performers this weekend is an actor slash comedian slash rapper that's been making quite a bit of noise the last couple of years. Donald Glover, who goes by the stage name Childish Gambino. is perhaps best known for his role on the NBC TV show Community, as well as appearances in several films. He's also a brilliant stand-up comedian, and add one more thing to his arsenal, the kid is just an unbelievable rapper as well. With Glover's versatility, he's clearly one of the hardest working people in showbiz, but his music stands out for its humor, its modern innovative sound, and his prowess with tongue-twisting rhymes. He is a fantastic artist. Don't get lost in the fact that he made his name first and foremost in acting, and now it's someone who's trying to dabble in music as well. He is just a phenomenal performer, a phenomenal artist, and a great DJ. He's released several independent albums before his big break breakthrough last year with the album Camp, which made him a star in music, even bigger than he is on TV. He's been touring relentlessly, especially on the festival circuit, appearing at Coachella and Bonnaroo and other major festivals, including this weekend's Lollapalooza. He recently put out a free mixtape available for download on his website, IamDonald.com. So if you know of Donald Glover for his great acting on the TV show Community, check out his music too. The free download of royalty from IamDonald.com is a great place to start. Here's one of the hit songs from his album Camp. This is called Heartbeat. Thursday. I know that you heard me, but you don't want the same thing. Well, two can play that game. So I'm chilling with my girlfriend, but she's not my real girlfriend. She got a key to my place, but she's not my real girlfriend. Stupid, so dummy. Say the wrong thing and wrong girls come running. I'm paranoid. That
that these girls want something from me And it's hard to make a dime go 100 And my dude freaking out over a work space She on time, but she late for their first date Cause he went and tried out a new condom Stop in the Good problems, right, wrong Ask him if she wanna play games with the Super Smash Brothers But none of them you I miss the sex where you kiss whenever you threw It's the only dinner for two I was wrong, but would you have listened to you? You were crazy, I got a heart with the art of It's only thing girls want when you that f***ing like I want you know that I am ready to go Heartbeat, my heartbeat So that's it for me this week. Thank you as always for tuning in. We are one year old here at fishduck.com. Thank you for being part of the grand adventure, the great experiment that, that this has been. Until next time, this is Kurt saying go fish, get hooked, go ducks. Are we best friends? Are we something in between that? I wish we never f***ed and I mean that. But not really. <laughs>